Hi, I'm Annika Johnson from Al Johnson's in Sister Bay. I hope you enjoy my new video series called Door County Girl. These are stories of my life, the people and places that I love, and of course, how we all survive here in Northern Wisconsin. You can come back as often as you like, but don't forget to subscribe to Al's YouTube channel. I'll be posting lots of really cool new videos. So let's go. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Door County Girl. Today I'm back with my brother, Rolf. Yep, and we are going to be making something very, very, very tasty today, which we always make tasty food, but, you know, just thought I'd throw it in there. You know what we're making today? I have no idea. We are making a Swedish meatball, but with a new twist on it, and it's going to be vegetarian Ooh. Swedish meatball. No, not vegan. Vegetarian? How come? <laughs> well, I was going to get to that. Um, slowly but surely, we will be turning over the recipes at Al's to be a little more cost friendly because the cost of meat has been getting so high that we are actually going to slowly introduce a vegetarian style meatball. Hopefully we can wean out the other meatball altogether because of the cost. The food cost is crazy. Holy cow. Yeah. What are so, people going to think about that? I don't know. You know we're we're going to have a vegetarian we, Swedish meatball in place of regular meatballs. You know, that grandma out, made. outside of me saying it, they probably wouldn't even know. Probably not. You're so, right. And, and, and Rolf's whole theory is he's only doing it because they don't have eyes. Well, I'm, I'm happy that we're going that route. Yeah. But now oh, my the, God. People are going to freak. And the other thing is we're getting away from the brown gravy. We're going to go with a traditional cream-style gravy. Which, well, every time I go to Sweden, or isn't many times, but... Usually when I had them over there, they had a cream sauce. Yes, like but now, so what do you think of our idea switching over completely meatless meatballs? Oh boy, it's going to be a tough sell for all my carnivore friends out there, like Mindy and, uh, you know. Do you know what day today is? What? I'll give you a hint. Eddie Valentine's birthday. April, April Fools, Fools everyone. <laughs> nah, we're just, I'm just har, yeah, exactly. I'm just kidding around. Har, har. We're really just introducing. Don't worry, Mindy. We're still having meat <laughs> in the meatballs. And my buddy Patrick Steves, who eats his weight in meatballs. Oh yeah. Okay, now we're really making vegetarian meatballs. That part's true. This is not something you find at the restaurant, but I do hope you give this recipe a try. It's super, super easy. Uh, I just made some at uh, Al's before I left here to have some of the gals try out, and they just texted me a moment ago and said they loved them. Maybe Fantastic. we should have a, an option well, you on know, the menu, because there's a lot of vegetarian folks out there, and they always go, what do you have that's vegetarian on the menu? I know, me being vegetarian, every time I go to a supper club, I usually get a Reuben no meat, extra yeah. sauerkraut or something to that effect. Sometimes I'll go over to uh, a place where I know it's going to be limited and I'll just make sure I eat a peanut butter sandwich before I go and get a salad instead. Well, if Burger King can do it, we can do it. Yeah, well, we'll <laughs> let's slowly weed into that. Uh, okay. weed into that. We'll but try it. Let's anyway, see. Anyway, so what we're going to start out today here is we have two cups of wild rice. That's going to go into the bowl. And actually what I used here, and you can do the same, is uh, I didn't have all the wild rice I needed, so I used a blend. So it's actually one cup and one cup of a heirloom rice. Um, and we're also going to add some mushrooms, which my sister is chopping up. We want to chop those up really, really fine. I'm sure so it mixes in with the, with the uh, rice. So make sure that's real fine. And we're going to put it in. Oh, by the way, these recipes will be online. And it, it's crazy easy, so I, I really encourage you to make it. And we're going to throw in two eggs. And we're going to throw in, this is a little bit of smoked paprika, some salt, <laughs> and some uh, garlic powder. Oh, I love mushrooms. Well, this is, what I got was a, a, a medley blend. You want kind of a woodsy uh, mushroom for this dish. So like a, a oyster mushroom, some call them king oysters. Uh, uh, one of those criminy ones or whatever they're called. Uh, 
Um, and uh, what else did we get here? Yeah, button mushroom will work, but it doesn't have that, that good flavor. Portobello's work really, really nice. But uh, yeah, really chop it up fine. And we're also gonna throw some breadcrumbs in here. It's one cup of those. I'll have measurements online. And this is a full fat yogurt. Full that's fat, gonna go. People. Yeah, full yeah. Fat. You, you need it to help uh, add the, a little, uh, uh, well, not just flavor, but you want a little, uh, so it's not dry, the words I'm getting at. We're not making skinny food today. No. So go ahead and chop those a little bit more, and then we're gonna throw that all in here. I'm gonna chop this so I don't chop my fingers. You know, I was on a cooking show one time. I think I don't know if I mentioned this, but I hacked pretty heavily into my finger. I know, I heard the story. <laughs> but tell them how you saved the day. Well, during the show, I was talking and manhandling a knife, which I had no business doing, and I just sharpened it beyond sharp. You were trying to show off. Yeah, exactly. The, the night before, I made sure it was razor sharp. And I got carried away and I looked up at the camera and I missed what I was doing. And I hacked into my thumb. And uh, kind of reminiscent of a Julia Child uh, skit on Saturday Night Live. We talk about that a lot because that's And really I was fun. able to, to hold the thumb and put it under the counter while it was going and nobody caught it. And no one knew you had cut yourself. No, either. nobody you found out. So then I just kept using one hand for the rest of the show. It was a short segment. And... Right when they said cut, I said, you ain't kidding. <laughs> and they're like, what? I said, I cut the heck out of my finger. And they're like, you did not. I said, yeah, and I uncovered it, and blood was pumping. <laughs> so my trusty buddy, Kit, he raced over to the convenience store at a gas station. He happens to be a first responder. And he's a first responder. <laughs> and he goes, you know, he's always like, oh, that ain't nothing. Well, well I looked at it. Super and I, glue on he that. put some super glue on it, and we were back in business. And then uh, the next episode, we had a shoot that same day. We were fortunate we had to do a Swedish baked ham. And to slather the ham, you do it with a gloved hand, so that worked out real well. I made sure I glued the thumb up, put the glove on, then we slathered the mustard oh on. Oh my God. And then after mentioning it, people would slow it down and see, oh, that's where he cut his finger. I can see it now. <laughs> they don't care about the recipe. <laughs> they just wanted they just to, want see to see where, where he cut the finger. finger. <laughs> All right, so that's beautiful. Ooh, Let's go that. ahead. And, they look like nuts. Yep, go ahead and throw those in here. And oh, that's another plus. Now, a lot of... Uh, vegetarian meatballs call for some kind of nuts, walnuts or, or pine nuts or something hey, like yeah, that. Yeah, in Trempolo I had some walnut balls. And I'm not knocking them, those are tasty, but if you have somebody that's allergic to nuts, and that's it's a quite common allergy, this is a perfect alternative. And, yeah, uh, and as moist. long as, as mushrooms are kind of moist. As long as not allergic to mushrooms. There we go. Look at all that. So the beauty about this one can here is you can shop that up. That's going to be for our decoration when we're all done. Um, what's nice about this too is, you know, as myself being a vegetarian, a lot of times you go to dinner at somebody's house and of course the, usually the main uh, portion of the meal, the main, main course will be some kind of meat dish. Well, if you decide to have meatballs, Swedish meatballs, Italian meatballs, whatever you have. If you give this one a shot, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised, very pleased. I'm not going to say it's going to... And gonna, so will your guests. Yeah, you just got to remember, I'm not trying to... We're not trying to uh, imitate meat, per se. We're just trying to find a texture that will go well with the rest of the Rolf sauce. Rolf just wants you all to become vegetarians <laughs> yes. so you stop eating animals, people. Could you stop moment, Larry, and put one tablespoon of olive oil in here to oh, appreciate yeah. that. And that's just going to add a little moisture to it as well. Can it be any oil or olive oil is best? Uh, any oil is good. I just happen to choose olive oil because I like olive and oil. And most people have it. Yeah. Canola oil is another good choice. It's... So once we have it all mixed up. Ooh, it smells really good. Is that what I'm smelling? It smells delicious. It does smell good. So let's go ahead and what we're going to do here is we are going to move this out of the way and we're going to make some little uh, meatballs out of this. Ooh. So uh, I'm going to wash my hands real quick while you're entertaining. So. 
You want to do this with clean hands, obviously. Yeah. Or some gloved hands. In case you cut your finger earlier. Not me. Not yet. So we're going to make some little meatballs out of here. And this is a, that's a two tablespoon scoop or a two ounce roughly. And that's all we're going to do. Yeah, this they're is nice it. and sticky too. Yep. Remember we were making those um, vegetarian, uh, uh, what's that guy's name again? Lindsberg? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is that his name? Lind? I, Lind uh, well, whatever, because yeah, we yeah. can't remember yeah, 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 yeah. But we made this delicious meat patty. And uh, we, oh, tried the, it, yeah. uh, we tried it to a, vegetarian style it. It was good. And we couldn't get them to yeah, stick. Yeah, we couldn't get them to stick. Yeah, we were. We should have added a little olive oil. Or, you know, maybe an extra egg or maybe. Some mushrooms. Or maybe a uh, some salt always helps things bind. If you're ever making a meat dish and you have a hard time uh, getting the meat to bind, salt, if you add them together first, the salt and the meat, it'll bind. A little trick I learned when I was making meatballs. This. That's awesome. They almost look like, I just took a little ski adventure out to Lake Tahoe to visit my friend KC. And uh, my friend Liz that I was traveling with would always make these peanut butter balls and put them in the freezer so we would have things to munch on if we got hungry. That's what they look like. They look like those with the oatmeal in them and raisins and whatever you want to throw oh, in like there. Those, like those hippie health bars, yeah, right? Yeah, hippie, hippie <laughs> balls. They're hippie yeah. balls, but they were delicious. I had a hankering to put a little jelly on them. When you, when you were over in uh, Tahoe, did you guys go to my uh, favorite restaurant in the world at all? What's that one? Sprouts. Of course, twice. Oh, did you? I, I love have, that that's place. That's one of my favorite restaurants, I, too. I Sprouts. go there. I haven't been there in years, and uh, they don't know me at all, at all. They don't really know me. But I know if I go in there at least once or twice on my trip, the guy doesn't, the, they don't seem to forget me then. Then they're like, hey, Rolf, when you walk in, I'm like, how do you remember who I am? They go, ah. Because you get the same thing every I get this. I in. order the, oh, here comes Rice Bowl Cadillac. Yep. Yeah. That's what I get, Rice Bowl Cadillac. <laughs> like when Ralph goes to Beans and Barley in Milwaukee. Oh, they, yeah, yeah. Don't Ralph even, only gets one thing yeah, there, the, one The thing. grilled veggie sandwich. Don't even give me the menu. I know exactly what I want. That's right. All right, could you do me a favor? Could you take that pan and slide it in the oven? Yes. How come we're doing it in the oven instead uh, of on, you're the gonna, grill, on the grill right here? Because it's not going to roll like meat would roll. So what happens is uh, you want to put it in there and you're going to put it at 400 degrees and it's going to get a nice crust on the outside and it's going to firm up. Okay. So when those eggs cook, just kind of like an omelet cooks, it's going to hold it all together. that's actually better too. You're not adding extra grease on the meatballs and exactly. stuff like that. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do while that's cooking, okay. okay, we're going to make a white sauce, a white gravy that goes with that. Okay. So we're going to do that. We're going to put in uh, three tablespoons of butter. We're going to melt these down. And why do you want the white kind of? Uh, you know, traditionally, that's what you'll see over in Sweden. That's, uh, you know, remember more and more. Mm -hmm. We always had a, a pepper style white gravy. And yep. if you go to that great big box Swedish department store that is coast to coast worldwide, you know the one I'm talking yep. about, big blue and gold building. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. serve uh, a white sauce that's more traditional. And I actually like that sauce. You mean the Walmart of Sweden? <laughs> yeah. My mom likes to call it the honeymoon store. Yeah, because, the honeymooner store. Yeah, because she says when folks get married, that's their first stop because Everything all the rooms are picked reasonable. out for them. Yep. Yeah, and it's I'll reasonable. Take that room and that room. Yeah. Thank and, you. And, I, and I enjoy it very much as well. Yeah. But uh, I will say, as a packaged mix, they have a very, very nice uh, uh, gravy there. And it's also vegetarian. It's not vegan. It's made with heavy cream, but it's vegetarian. And we're still not making this one vegan. It does have um, some uh, sour cream in yep. it. So, but it's 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 a very tasty one. Well, I need to go great with the mushrooms and the rice. So. So all I need is just to scrape out the. We got the flour we're going to put in here, and we're going to cook this flour as a roux. And you know, the secret to making roux is making sure that you have ample time to cook it because if you don't cook it long enough you get that flour taste so you almost want to bring it to just a little slight bubble not necessarily a boil this you just want it to bubble up a little bit just takes a couple minutes yeah. right yep and it doesn't take long at all but you do, if you turn away from it it'll burn in no time oh yeah so you got to so make you sure keep stirring it so. well you, you kind of wait and you watch and to see wait till it bubbles up and when it does so you can start seeing it on certain yep. parts it's starting I to bubble that, already yeah. So, 
Some guys, uh, or some cooks, they like to have a kind of a brown roux, kind of similar to brown gravy, but I, I don't care for that because I taste that. You can get that nuttiness out of it, but it's, it's it okay if you go too far. Yeah. But you see how it's starting to s s simmer yeah. there, little bubbles? Bubbling, I see it. So then we're going to throw in, this is a seasoning. It's uh, garlic, garlic, onion powder, and white pepper. Garlic, onion powder. Yeah, we use a lot of white pepper at the restaurant. You know, we, we had to actually get some um, black, black pepper, pepper because from the tables because no one's... people would always look at it and they would always go, "Oh, salt!" and "Oops!" and there went my eggs. And they yeah, or they always say, "Hey, we have two salts on the table." Yeah. I go, "No, you don't. You have one's white pepper and one's regular salt." And I always go, "I can always tell because they look different, but we have those blue yeah. glass." Well, now we went to the black pepper. I don't know if you paid attention to that. Yeah. I did. But I, I like cooking with white pepper because it it's, seems more Swedish to me and yeah. whether it is or isn't. And it's actually a little potent. I think it is too. It's I, got I, more of a little sour potent a, It's taste. got a bite to it. Yeah. And uh, I remember listening to uh, one of my favorite radio shows on NPR, Dr. Zorba, and they said, Tom challenged him, you couldn't tell the difference. And I said, I, I believe him, you, you could tell the difference. Dr. Zorba said I could. So what he did is, and I haven't tried it yet, he took a cucumber and he put equal amounts of white pepper and black pepper on both slices and his eye blindfolded and he couldn't tell the difference. Really? I think I, I could. I think I could too. <laughs> I mean, I can tell the difference right away. I would think so. Maybe he's losing his taste buds. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. That guy. So we got to put this in here yet. This is uh, full fat sour cream. And Swedes usually would use a cream itself to make their gravy, but... Trust me on this one, too. This gravy is delicious. All right, so now... Could you use this gravy on other things? Like if they just wanted to make uh, the gravy, what else would you suggest it on? You know, I've never had it. Uh, you could, you know, mashed potatoes and things like that, but of course you would serve your meatballs with mashed potatoes. Or like maybe some chicken? Yeah, I think so, but uh, it, it tastes... Scandinavian to me for somehow. I don't know how else to explain it. Well, I have a question. What about when they make fish in Sweden? Is that the same kind of white sauce? Uh, no, that's a little bit different. I like that white sauce they, they make. With and that. they also put a lot of dill in that one. Oh, Remember? Because yeah. the dill's like this. Lemon. And lemon, yeah. Almost like a, a. When you have a. It's more like a poached salmon type of sauce. It's, what's it called? Salmon um, scallopini. It's like yeah. a scallopini flavor. So we're going to stir this, and as it heats up, it's going to come to a boil, and it's going to thicken. So we don't want to take our eyes off it too long. Okay. But while we're doing this, and the meatballs are in there cooking, we can take those out. And this is the one. You want to use that just in case. So you might notice that we have a different pan through the magic of television yeah. to speed How things up a little bit. Yeah. You didn't tell oh, them. we have some <laughs> very observant people out there. We try to be quick about this, you know. Otherwise, so, we'd be here all day but, trying to talk about meatballs. Okay, now go ahead and see now these how, feel how these firmed up. Oh my gosh! You know? And when you put the sauce on them, they're not going to be crunchy. When you put the sauce on them and you take a fork to them, they're going to easily. Uh, cut in half like a meatball would. It's weird. They're crispy, almost like you had them in a deep fryer. Yeah. But they're not, but they were in the oven. And like I said, so that's 400 degrees for about 20, about 20 minutes. But keep an eye on them. If you got a convection oven, obviously it'll take you a little less time. But now we're bringing this to a boil, almost. And what some people actually do when they get this far, mm -hmm. they'll just pour the roux in there and turn the the, the stove on high, and just let it simmer. But I want to make sure that the sauce goes over the top of the meatballs. So, and that's going to be all there is really to it. So just if you hang on for just a moment while that comes to a boil, we're going to enjoy them. Well, tell me a little story. You're well, always full of stories. i tell you some stories. I uh, can't think of the top of my head right now. Oh, I want to, by the way, if you noticed the restaurant when you were gone, we had lift the roof on the oh, restaurant. Yes, or lift the yes, ceiling, rather. Yes. And our, uh, I have to say that, you know, we don't, get to say it enough, but our employees do such a good job. I mean, I was gone for two weeks and I came back and it was like nothing ever happened. Yeah. I mean, I didn't realize that I took the two weeks that they were going to come in and do the renovation. Right. But I mean, Freddie, kudos to him and oh, Kit yeah. and uh, Jessica and uh, Kara yeah. and all the girls. Jamie, that everybody that humped, you know, their, their tails off. Clean, and Laura 
everybody who came back, I probably forgot a few names, but I'm just saying, they came in and you act, it, it was like, it was never something so what, that happened. So now you, when you weren't there uh, and they were taking off the ceiling yeah. from the bottom up, obviously, uh, it was like a time capsule. There was a square in there we where there used to be uh, two foot tiles, so two by twos. And we had one by ones, and then we went to these plank style now. But Danny Peterson must have signed a name on there when he was Ooh, our I manager. Think you showed me that. So this would have been about somewhere around 1953 to 19, I would say around 1970. And for those of you that don't know who Danny Peterson is, he was our kitchen manager and he was he owned the Viking restaurant, which now has just recently sold, but he'd had that for how many years? Yeah, so when he, his, when he, uh, he joined my dad at the restaurant and he was his right-hand man from 1953 till, oh, the uh, 80s, mid-80s. Yep. And uh, that's when he bought the Viking. But uh, he was a tough guy to work for, but fair. But he was tough, but he was fair. You know what I liked? Every time we came into the kitchen when we were little kids, he'd go, get out, <laughs> get out. Wait, you liked that? Well, yeah. I kind of did yeah. now because we used to always want to go down there and hang around in the kitchen and get in the way and like just pester everybody. But he, my dad gave him strict orders. You kick those damn kids out when they come in the restaurant. You kick them out. When we were scrubs... I, you know, I, I learned from older scrubs, and they, they would teach me the ropes, and they would say, you know, we had, we had this one thing we called hood night. And that's when David Dobner, our other kitchen manager, Dobba was in charge, and he would say, well, we're going to clean the hoods. We're going to go up there in the hoods, and everybody dressed in their shorts and a, you know, a lousy T-shirt, and you wore these towels on your head because this grease was going to drip on you along with grease remover. And we'd spend from 9 o'clock till about 1 in the morning cleaning the hoods. Well, this was back in the early 70s. You guys got paid good money for yeah, that. Yeah, so Dad would walk around at the end, and he would everybody $50, $50, $50 cash. Well, that was gold to us, right? So um, then one day I'm working there, and it said, you know, we haven't had a hood night for a while. And Lyndon Erickson told me it's GI night. I go, what is GI night? He goes, that's the worst of the worst. I said, why? He says, it's not Davo, it's Danny Peterson. I said, GI stands for what? He goes, general inspection. He's going to treat you like you're in the army. I said, what? So he'd come in there, and he'd go with a flashlight, every nook and cranny when you cleaned up the machine. And he'd say, dirt, do it again. Oh, my gosh. And, and nobody that I know of ever got away with one cleaning. It was always twice, sometimes three Did you guys times. you get paid twice the money? No, <laughs> no. But twice a year, we'd have GI night. I used to cringe on that one. G.I. night, because Dabo did all the other ones? Dabo did the uh, hood nights, and he was just as tough. Yeah. But he didn't, he'd look at it once, and he'd say, yeah, do it again. But Danny would practically come in there with a white glove, smudge there, and he goes, do it again. Oh, boy. You never got to be the G.I. Nope, nope. But now we hire a, t a team that uh, does our hoods for us. Yeah, and they get those awesome T-shirts, and I finally what they, got one. What are they called? The, uh, it's something about... The Grease Police, the Boys in the Hood. Yep, the Grease Police, Bra uh, Boys in the Hood. They're called... Uh, and I uh, begged and begged and begged for that T-shirt, and I finally got one. Bracus, I think their name yep. is. Yeah, I thought that was a clever slogan. Let's say, check this out now, so... You know what I thought you were going to find up in the attic there? What's that? The shot glass that we we leave up there. Oh. I thought that's a little thing of whiskey. <laughs> yeah, we used to always put a glass of whiskey up there for my Uncle Ellis. He, he drowned. He had drowned right off of before Little Sister. And uh, on the bluff there, he was fishing. He couldn't swim a lick. And, uh, yeah, he, he met his uh, maker that way. But uh, Dad used to say you'd put a shot of whiskey up there every night. And come Ellis, the next day, it'd be gone. And I said it there. evaporated. Yeah. He goes, how oh, does it evaporate overnight? And I said, hey, there's nobody up. But maybe he was right. Yeah. All right, look what we got. It All looks right. beautiful. So now take your parsley oh, yeah. and sprinkle it around there. And then I'm going to... Looks great. Take Smells. a fork and another fork... And we're going to eat it right out of the pan because I just want you to try it. Okay. I'm all about it. I'm like Joey on Friends. What are we eating? Got a fork in my pocket? So. I'm going to have the other half of yours. How's it? And be honest. I mean, I, I, I think they're fantastic. Ha! Mmm. And you can adjust the salt you know and the pepper. Oh, 
almost tastes like I'm eating pork. Really? I mean, maybe, the flavoring. Maybe it's the sauce. I don't know. I mean, like the flavoring, you would not... If, if you didn't know you were eating a vegetarian meatball right now, you would swear there's meat in there. You know what's nice about this as well? You could really make a... Mm, uh, they're so good. A, meat, at, a meatloaf out of it. They hold together. They're not like falling they're apart all or crumbly. anything. Mmm. I love it. No, I the really. Sauce is fabulous. Isn't it good? Yes. Good. I'm glad you like it. Now, you really should give this a try. And like I said, you can make a meatloaf out of this. Mm. Obviously, a vegetarian meatloaf, and it'll really hold together well. And uh, even if it's for a change of pace, I think meat eaters will enjoy it as well. But you know what this would be good with? You know how everybody always gives you tater tots. This oh yeah, nice yeah, 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 yeah. If you have a nice piece of meat. You can put a couple of these on the side. Yeah, and if you're gonna sauce. if you're gonna make this, by all means, make sure you serve it on a nice plate. Sprinkle the parsley, and don't forget some nice whipped mashed potatoes and a nice dollop of Al Johnson Swedish lingonberries. Lingonberries. Then you're styling. Then you're styling. Yeah, we didn't have any with this. No, we'll but, have to bust uh, them out when the camera goes off, so we can eat some. Anyhow, we like to share with our camera guys. Well, that comes at this one brings it to an end, I guess. So, well, that was delicious. I think everyone should try these. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, I am impressed, but I'm also happy that we're not getting rid of our meat, <laughs> meatballs. But I think we should add these on as a side recipe. Yeah, I hope nobody turned it off right at the beginning and said, Why, well, I'm not watching it. That's it. <laughs> we're not going to Al Johnson's anymore. We're eating beef. Yeah. Where's the beef? Okay, well, that, that wraps up another episode of Door County Girl. Thanks for coming, and don't forget to... Hit the like button and subscribe. Yeah. Well, thanks, everyone. See you next time. Let's have some more while we're here. Yeah, I'm going to have another taste of it. I like that cream sauce. It's so good. Wait till the guys try it. They're going to love it. It's going to be gone before they get to it. Yeah. Thanks for watching Door County Girl. Don't forget to subscribe, and we will see you next time.